Zippers are an important closure technique to know for many different kinds of sewing. They can be a little intimidating, but like anything else in sewing, zipper installation is a process. In this episode, we'll share zipper tips, experiment with a few zipper installation methods, and test our invisible zipper skills together. Joining us is expert pattern designer, Adriana Apple of Hey June Handmade. Let's head to the lab. Hi, I'm Amanda Carestio. I'm Kate Zeinard. And I'm Meg Healy. We are the hosts of the Sew and Tell podcast, and we are very excited to start a new series for you called Stitch Lab. In each episode, we are gonna cover essential techniques and present inspiring experiments. I need to put my safety glasses on for this experiment. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, great. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> that was a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be. Wow. Welcome to Stitch Lab. This episode, we are talking all about zippers, and we are so lucky to have a very special guest with us, Adriana Apple of Hey June Handmade. Hi, Adriana. Hi, thanks for having me. Thank you so much for being here. So let's jump into zippers. They are a very effective and important technique to know for all kinds of sewing, whether you're doing bags, mm -hmm. garments, home decor. They are super useful, but I have to confess, I don't love them. I'm <gasps> definitely more of a button person, um, mm -hmm. but I understand they are, they're very functional and useful and maybe wonderful someday, but <laughs> how do you feel? I love zippers. Do you? I love how reliable they are. If you can follow the steps clearly and in order, you usually have a great result. Whereas with buttons, I kind of feel like it depends on the day, the yes. humidity level, mm -hmm. whether mm -hmm. your machine agrees with you or not, <laughs> but I love zippers. Yes, I agree. I love zippers. I have every color of the rainbow of zippers. I love sewing them. I'll definitely prefer them over buttoned and buttonholes. So let's see if we can change your mind by the end of this episode, Amanda. I don't know. <laughs> I'm open to it. I'm open to it. Well, I think, Adriana, you're exactly right. I think that zippers can be really intimidating, especially for new sewists, mm -hmm. sometimes for experienced sewists. <laughs> yeah. um, but it is just a process. I will say that Every time I install a zipper, no matter what kind it is, I have to look at the instructions. It's yes. not something that I just remember intuitively. I don't know if it's the same way for you. I write patterns with zippers and I have to follow my own directions step by step <laughs> every single time. <laughs> yeah, I've filmed a, a video before on a zipper and I've watched myself. I relearned it myself, so I definitely need a refresher every time as well. <laughs> well, I'm glad to know that I'm not the only one. No. Let's talk about projects that zippers are great for. I think ton of garment projects, whether you're sewing hoodies, and this is actually a knit hoodie. I wouldn't recommend starting your first zipper install no. with, a, with a knit fabric. It's definitely something that is easier to do with a woven, so don't start here. But hoodies, jackets, jeans and pants of all kinds. You have some pants too, right? I do have some pants, and this is actually a zippered pocket. Ah. It's a little well. Oh, yeah. And so you can see that's where the opening of the pocket is. So neat and tidy. Mm. This is a separating zipper, mm -hmm. as you can see for any garment that has a zipper all the way through, and there you go. So pretty. I like that pop of gold. I really yes. like to use zippers as a decorative feature mm -hmm. for a garment. Absolutely. Oh yeah, I, I love a metal zipper. I'm a huge, huge fan of those. Also for home decor, any kind of like basic pillow closure mm -hmm. and bags. I feel like that's Absolutely. someplace where if, you, if you're intimidated by zippers, maybe start there. It's all straight seams, yep. yes. nothing to worry about. Yep, absolutely. Let's talk a little bit about the different kinds of zippers because you, when you go to the craft store, I think you're gonna be surprised. There's a lot of options. Oh yeah. I grabbed a few samples here. We've got the awesome metal zipper with the lovely silver edges here. That really wanna to show it off, right? exposed zipper, I, I feel like. Oh yeah. We've got an invisible zipper, which comes in really handy with garment projects and we'll be doing a little bit of experimenting later on with that one. We've got an all-purpose zipper. 
You'll also notice that these are different lengths. Some of them are easier to trim down than others. So I think it's best to kind of start from your pattern instructions and get the right length zipper, but know that if, if you only have this in your stash and you really want to use it, you can, you can cut some of them down. And then I've got the world's teeniest separating zipper here. And I was trying to figure out what this one might be used for, but I think it might be for doll clothes? Maybe doll clothes or maybe a very small purse. Very, very <laughs> small purse. Oh, um, yes! So lots of different options when it comes to zippers. Let's talk a little bit about zipper feet. So in order to get really nice and close to your zipper teeth, depending on which type of zipper that you want to sew, there are specialty feet. Every sewing machine comes with a zipper foot that looks something like this. And in conjunction with your needle positioning, you'll move it one side to the other, depending on how you're sewing your zipper on and what stage you're on in your zipper. But you can also get specialty feet for specific zippers. The invisible zipper foot is one of my best friends in my, mm -hmm. in my sewing studio because I love invisible zippers. So here is a nice dress and any guesses what's in this seam right here? I don't know. I can't see anything. Oh, it's invisible. right. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's an invisible zipper, and I use them all the time. If that's a little, you know, too intimidating, this one you really don't even need a zipper foot. So these applications, you can just use your regular presser foot because you have that whole zipper tape to just paste on on your garment. So you can really have fun with those. All right, let's head to the lab. We are going to install an exposed zipper. We will practice with the fly zipper, and then we are gonna play with the invisible zipper and see how invisible we can actually make them. I'm excited. Yeah. Gotta get my lab coat on. We are gonna get started with an exposed zipper. I kind of love this one the most of all the zippers because if you're gonna do all that work to put it in, you might as well make it a design feature and be able to see all of your work. I've done a little bit of prep here, created a facing that matches my zipper length. It's gonna nest right down in the little window we create here. And I have sewn it to my right side fabric with right sides together along these lines. Now, if you're working from a pattern, most of the time the lines are gonna be marked, so you just transfer those to your fabric or your interfacing. And I think this fabric is pretty sturdy, but it's probably a good idea to use interfacing for this part just to get everything to lie nice and neat. I've stitched around the outer edge already, and I'm just gonna cut this open here. Again, we're creating a little window for this zipper this happy little zipper to live in. <laughs> so I get to the end here and I'm just gonna cut a little Y right up to my stitching line and hopefully not through it. Yes, two not through. The interfacing really helps for this step to keep your cut stable so that when you flip it, the fabric doesn't get warped. Got it. Next, we are going to turn this to the fabric wrong side and give it a nice press. Next, we're gonna put the zipper underneath the window and kind of nest it in there. You want your lower zipper stop kind of just in line with the bottom of the window opening. You could baste this in place, and I'm just gonna pin it. This is also a good place if you like to use any kind of adhesive to hold things together mm -hmm. instead of yeah. pins. You can use regular scotch tape or you can use double-sided fusible wash away tape. If this is your first time, that might be a good option for you to make sure it doesn't shift at all while you're sewing. I'm just going to live dangerously today. <laughs> Pins work great for our expert here. Yeah. So I just have my regular zipper foot on the machine. You definitely want to start stitching your zipper at the bottom and work up so that if you get any bubbles or puckers, those are kind of pushed out the top of the fabric rather than cut it down towards the bottom of the zipper where they're going to be a little bit harder to hide. Definitely. All right, let's see how I did. Looks gorgeous. I'm gonna give it a couple snips, and obviously I'm using red thread here, so the stitches are really visible. This would be so cute in the back of a blouse, or you could even do it in a front blouse placket. So many uses for this installation. And it adds just the perfect amount of decorative touch to your garment, too. Absolutely. I really love that. 
All right, let's get started with the fly zipper. I feel like this one is definitely one where I have to have my instructions out through the whole process. It's just really hard to envision how it's gonna work. It's a lot of steps, but if you just follow them in order, mm -hmm. you'll be great. As oh. you can see, this is my own pattern. I wrote this and I'm still gonna follow the steps. And that's okay. <laughs> I will not oh, be able yeah. to remember them otherwise. All right, so I've already prepped this. This is actually part of a skirt pattern. So you can see instead of having a crotch curve here, it's just straight down. Mm. So I prepped the fly area and you're just trimming one side. You're sewing a basting stitch to where the opening is gonna be. So eventually we will rip out these stitches. But when you're sewing a fly zip, it's really important that they stay together mm -hmm. while you're sewing. And then I've just sewn the bottom part um, below the fly. So we are ready to start with the actual zipper install. And the first step is we are gonna turn the zipper so it is right sides together with the trimmed section of the fly. For most of these steps, we're sewing the zipper to the fly parts only. So we will mm -hmm. need to get the skirt or pants out of the way. So I've done that. And now I'm gonna lay this right sides down. I'm actually going to align the bottom of the tape, not the stop, the bottom of the tape with the bottom of the fly. And your zipper will probably be too long, but that's fine, we're not gonna deal with that for right now. So I'm gonna take this to my sewing machine. I'm gonna sew as close to the teeth as possible. So now I've sewn the zipper right sides together with the cut side of the fly, and now we are going to install our fly shield. This will look different for every pattern. Mm -hmm. This is a one piece fly, so you fold it right sides together, sew it, flip it right sides out, and press. And as you can see, it will mimic the shape of the fly on this side. Yeah. So wow. we're gonna install that, and the way to do that is you have your zipper flipped out like it is here, and you're just gonna slide it underneath. You're gonna align it with the cut opening of your, what will be the cut opening of your garment. And then we were, are just gonna secure it to the zipper by sewing an edge stitch as close as we can on the actual cut fly piece, not on the zipper, but it will go through the zipper and the, the shield in the back. Okay, for the next steps, we're gonna actually secure the zipper to the other side of the fly. So to do that, let's move all of this out of the way. We're gonna need to pin back our fly shield so it doesn't get caught in this seam, but first make sure that your zipper is flat against the other side of the fly. Again, we are gonna have to get our skirt out of the way so that we can Got sew it. the zipper just to the mm -hmm. fly. Mm -hmm. I think I'm ready to sew some new jeans now. <laughs> I know, it's been a while for me. <laughs> okay, so now the zipper is attached to the other side of the fly. Our next step is we're gonna actually start attaching the fly to the garment. So I like to do a base stitch around this mm. curve here just to give myself a guide because this will be visible as you've seen in all of your pants and right. skirts where you see yeah. this nice um, curved stitch come around. So. I like to give myself a base stitch. It's not necessary, tip. but it's necessary yeah. for me. Yeah. I'm gonna bring this to my machine, but first we've changed out the foot from the zipper foot to a regular foot. And if you have one with some clear plastic base, that's a good one to use because you want to be able to see as much of this as you can as you're sewing. So I'm only sewing on the fly and the garment at this point, not the zipper itself. Got it. Okay, so let's see what we have here. So oh, yeah. I think it turned out pretty good. I and do too. This is just oh, a yeah. guide stitch. So after this, um, I'm not gonna demo it here, but I would go back over it with actually a thicker top stitching thread. Mm -hmm. So you can have that nice decorative gold or whatever color you're going for right there. And oh, then yeah. you can pull this stitch out. But this looks like a pretty decent guide. Yeah. So we're gonna leave that. And then you're gonna go back to the wrong side of your garment and you're gonna finally secure your zipper your fly shield um, to this side and so that you know when you open your zipper you don't see the insides of the garment you right. see the shield and it also protects your skin from the zipper teeth mm -hmm. oh so, yeah the most important part <laughs> yeah <laughs> we're gonna flip that back over and once again I'm gonna pin that and then instead of sewing all the way around because you do need to be able to get this open to get inside in and out of your garment I'm, we're gonna do a bar tack. So that's just securing it in one place. And because the bar tack is a visible decorative feature on your garment, you do wanna sew on the right side of your fabric. 
And you can do that any way. You can use a tight zigzag stitch. Sometimes your machine will come with a bar tack stitch that's mm -hmm. specialty for this process. And you can sew it kind of wherever you want, but you want to get it kind of right in that curve. You can do it horizontally along the stitch line. You can do it vertically for more of a, a decorative feature. It's up to you. But I'm just going to sew a couple stitches just so you can see the functionality of the zipper. So we don't have a true bar tack, but mm -hmm. we have enough of one here to show you how we'll, it will work. So the first thing we're going to do is remove our pin. And as you can see, it's really starting to look like a garment. I know, I kind of love this part, <laughs> it's especially so when it works out. Yeah. Everything's looking nice and clean, so I feel like I'm safe then to rip those original basting stitches that I did. And they should come out relatively easy because you've used your longest stitch length to secure them. You just go all the way down until you get to the bottom of your curved seam, and you'll also be able to feel where your stitches stop. Mm -hmm. And then you can clean this up a little bit and press it really nicely, but there you have it. That. And your pattern will tell you, you know, how to shorten this and then mm -hmm. attach your waistband or however it's finished, but that is your fly zip. That is awesome. <laughs> it's one oh. of my favorites. Yeah. I love doing these. Yes. So handy. That was a process, but it's <laughs> definitely worth it in the end. Let's try our hand at some invisible zippers next. <laughs> oh, I'm excited to see. We'll have an invisibility test. Okay, so we have our zipper and we have two pieces of fabric. I went ahead and surge finished my edges. I like to do that before I install my zipper. And I also opened my zipper and pressed the teeth flat away from the tape just so our needle can get right next to those teeth. So we have our zipper, we open it, and I'm just going to flip it and lay it right sides together, aligning the top piece of tape with the top of my fabric, because usually there's a waistband installed or there's a facing. And here with invisible zippers, you want to be conscious of your seam allowance. So it's tempting to just align the zipper tape with the edge of your fabric, but sometimes that can only be a half inch or three eighths of an inch allowance. If you have a five eighths of an inch allowance, you need to measure in from the edge to see where the zipper teeth are. And that's where you need to place your zipper tape. So I'm in about an eighth of an inch from the edge of my fabric. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. That will affect the fit of your garment, so it is pretty important to do that, even though it's an extra step. Yes. Yep. Right sides together with one edge facing down. So the zipper pull is facing the right side of my fabric. All right. So I have an invisible zipper foot on my sewing machine, but you can totally set up this zipper with your regular zipper foot. So any machine can sew an invisible zipper with just the regular zipper foot. So I'm gonna start right at the top and there's two grooves on the invisible zipper foot. So you wanna put it in the one that is to the left and your needle will just go right in the center. There's no adjusting your needle, it's on straight stitch. A tip is that I always, for this, put my pin heads facing towards me so they're easy to take out as I'm sewing this. That would have been smart. I went the opposite direction. I'm glad I told you about it now. It's okay. We're, we're in experimentation mode. Yeah. It has been a while since I've done this kind of zipper. And how far down do we stitch, Meg? When my zipper, the top of my zipper stop, it's all the way at the bottom, it just kisses the foot and that's okay. when I am going to back stitch. So I'm basically going as far as I can go. All right, looks great. Whew. Okay, at this point you take it away and then I like to actually do up the zipper. And this helps if you have a print like yours, you have a nice purple stripe, love mm -hmm. that. <laughs> purple is not my favorite. I have to confess, I knew about your feelings for purple. <laughs> <laughs> a little lab prank. Then I lay it, so I have my zipper like this, and then mm -hmm. I lay it right sides together with my edge, like so. And I match the top right here. And then okay. I pin it in place. Let's see if we can get those stripes lined <laughs> up. That's the, that's the other part of this challenge. 
here I do a match test. So I peel it open and then my fabric's solid, but you can at least get the general idea if there's anything matching, if there's a seam in there or directional print. So I always open it up and do a little test before, if I need to readjust my pins and then I undo my zipper again. It's very smart. It's looking great. Yeah, I think it might be a little bit off, but I feel I feel pretty ready to commit. Okay. Now you put the zipper teeth in the right groove and you Got start it. at the top. You're always starting from the top and going down to the bottom. And this key that you open your zipper right to that stop so you know that you're stitching to the same point each time when the foot just touches the pull. Okay. Let's see. It looks great. Well, it looks... I think you nailed it. <sighs> we'll, we'll see. see. Yep. So we should have something that looks like this. I'll zip mine back up too. Yes. Now, there's only one more thing that you need to do, and that is a crucial part because a lot of errors can happen right at that point where you, you want it to invisibly blend into the seam. So here is actually the point that you place it right sides together, and you want to shift that end tape out of the way to expose that ending stitch line right there. Okay. And then pin down the rest of your seam. So I have my entire seam pinned and I have this all stitched and ending right at that seam. And so now you are going to want to switch your invisible zipper foot Got to it. your regular zipper foot. So just your regular zipper foot. And you're going to want to position it on the left groove and move your needle over to the left because it's actually easier to start stitching from the bottom of the garment up to the okay. zipper stop. I find that this makes it easier to kind of maneuver the foot into a nice transition instead of starting there and the zipper like stop is in the way and your backs it's just i find it easier to start at the okay, bottom that's a good tip so we're starting at the bottom we started at the bottom now we're here look how far we've come look how far we've come at this point you would take it and press it open well you know what meg i think i figured out something what we just pulled this zipper out of the package and got started, and I think we skipped the pressing stage. Yeah, so it's important to press those zipper teeth away because when it's right out of the package, it's kind of curled up towards the teeth. And so mm -hmm. with the invisible zipper foot and even your regular foot, pressing it flat enables you to get in that little groove that's right next to the teeth instead of a little bit over where that curling can happen. That makes a lot of sense. I am gonna give that a try next time. <laughs> Pretty invisible. Right. Ours is mostly invisible. Well, we've, we're showing off our nice purple zipper anyway. That's right, that's <laughs> what everyone wants to see. Exactly. Thanks so much, Meg. Thank you for walking us through that process. And thank you to Adriana for joining us today thank to talk about zippers. This was so fun. Thank you for sharing all your tips. Anytime. All right, so what's the verdict, Amanda? Do you still hate zippers? Um, a little bit. <laughs> but I really do, I really do like, especially the decorative ones. I feel like I've been thinking a lot about athleisure and athletic wear I've been sewing recently and really thinking about maybe, maybe some zippers for that, some exposed zippers. Yes, I really want to start doing more exposed zippered pockets. They're oh, super yeah. great for, yeah, when you go golfing, so I'm not losing all my tees and balls and everything. So I'm definitely going to start incorporating those. And that fly front, I've been putting off making a pair of pants with a fly front for so long. I kind of just replaced all my zippers with elastic waistbands, but I need to get back to it. <laughs> Me too, friend. And yeah, and I'm gonna experiment a little bit more with that invisible zipper and the invisible zipper foot. Because even though my invisible zipper wasn't perfect, using the foot was kind of amazing and I'm definitely sold on it. Yes, it's a really great foot to have and it makes the process mm -hmm. much easier. Awesome, well, another great episode of Stitch Lab Down. 
This was fun. 